Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to recap Newton's three laws of motion. And this is something you would have covered at National 5 level. So let's get started. So we're going to look at Newton's first law to begin with. And Newton's first law states that an object will remain at rest or move at a constant speed in a straight line unless acted on by an unbalanced force. In other words, if forces are balanced, an object stays at rest or move at a constant speed. And we can think about seat belts to put this into context. So in a car crash, all objects attached to a car would stop with the car itself. However, by Newton's first law, anything not fixed to the car, for example passengers or objects that are just sitting on the seats, would continue to move forward at the original constant speed. So in this example here, we've got a motorcyclist hitting a set of tyres, and because they're not attached to the motorbike via a seatbelt, they're going to move off at the same constant speed that the motorbike was doing when it hit into the tyres. And just a wee bit on how the seatbelts work, it says that seatbelts can save lives as they apply a force in the opposite direction to the motion to stop the person and moving forward and hitting the steering wheel or windscreen. Next we have Newton's second law and Newton's second law states that when the forces acting on an object are unbalanced, the object will accelerate in the direction of the unbalanced force. In other words, the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the unbalanced force and inversely proportional to its mass. So this means that we have A equals F over M, so acceleration is equal to the force divided by the mass, or the one that you probably most likely remember as Newton's second law is F equals MA, where F is the unbalanced force measured in newtons, M is the mass measured in kilograms, and A is acceleration measured in meters per second squared. So all we're saying with this equation and with Newton's second law is that when a mass has an unbalanced force acting on it, then it will accelerate in the same direction as that unbalanced force. Related to Newton's second law are free body diagrams, and these are really useful when you want to analyze the forces acting on an object. So the name and size of each force is often labeled on the diagram. Usually though, you can get away with just putting the names of the forces to show what's happening in a certain situation. And this enables us to calculate the resultant force in a given situation and then apply Newton's second law. So as an example, a small plane of mass 1,200 kilograms flying through the air will have four forces acting on it thrust, drag, lift and weight. So we've got in the picture lift upwards and weight downwards and we've got drag moving against the direction of the plane and we've got thrust here from the engines of the plane. And it says here the vertical forces are balanced so the plane will fly at a constant height. So you can see on our labelled free body diagram we've got 11,760 newtons upwards and 11,760 newtons downwards. So the plane is not going to move upwards or downwards, in this case it's going to stay at a constant altitude, at a constant height. However, there is an unbalanced force of 3000 newtons to the left acting on the plane, so it will accelerate to the left. So in this case, you should be able to see that we've got 3400 newtons to the left from the thrust and 400 newtons drag to the right, so the overall unbalanced force will be 3000 newtons to the left, which means that the object will accelerate to the left. And we can calculate this acceleration using Newton's second law. So we have F equals MA, so if we rearrange this for A, we get A equals F over M, and then we put in our unbalanced force of 3000 divided by the mass of 1200 kilograms from the question, and if you put that into our calculator, you should get 2.5 meters per second squared to the left. So remember, acceleration is a vector quantity, so it needs a direction of to the left in this case. Here's a quick simulation just to put Newton's first and second laws into context. So right now we've got an object here and it's not moving, it's got a velocity of 0, 0.0 meters per second, and that is because the forces acting on it are balanced. So it's gonna stay where it is because the forces acting on it are balanced. If we were to then increase the force in a certain direction, so let's say we increase the force to the right by 3 newtons, then it's going to start accelerating in that direction, and that is Newton's second law. And that is us saying that an unbalanced force to the right there has caused the object to move to the right and accelerate to the right. Similarly, we could say that if we increase the force to the left, then the object will accelerate to the left. And that is because the unbalanced force is now to the left. Lastly, we have Newton's third law, and Newton's third law states that if an object A exerts a force on object B, then B exerts an equal but opposite force on A. In other words, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction, and that's probably the definition that you've heard before. You should be aware that the action and reaction forces are sometimes called Newton pairs. And note that when we're talking about Newton's third law and the two objects, the two forces do not act on the same object. So one force will act on one object and the other force will act on the other object. We do not have both forces acting on the same object. So as an example, we're going to revisit seatbelts, which we looked at for Newton's first law earlier. 
and it says here we have already seen how Newton's first law explains the need for seatbelts in vehicles. However, Newton's third law can also be used to explain exactly how seatbelts work. So you should remember that when we're talking about Newton's third law for a certain scenario, we need to talk about the action force and the reaction force, i.e. our Newton pair of forces for a situation. So in this case, our action force is when a car crashes, the driver moves against the seatbelt, exerting a force on it. So in this picture, it's the force to the right, so the force of the driver on the seatbelt when the car crashes. However, the reaction force is when the seatbelt locks in place and then exerts a force back on the driver, causing them to decelerate in a controlled way. And in the picture, that is this force acting to the left. So this is going to be the force of the seatbelt acting back on the driver. And notice in the picture that to describe the action and the reaction forces, all we've done is swap some of the words around. So in this case, we've got the force of the driver on the seatbelt, but in this case, we've got the force of the seatbelt on the driver. So all we've done is swap the words there. And that is all you have to do if you know the action force and you're trying to work out what the reaction force is going to be or vice versa. And you've probably all experienced that situation before where the car or vehicle that you're in will decelerate quickly and the seatbelt locks in place to keep you safe within the vehicle. That's all for this video folks, I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.